Okay. I'm going to do this. But the reason I'm doing this is try to help people, to try to get the word out, to try to stop spreading misinformation. Here's the thing. I don't have a vendetta against Pose. I am thankful for Dr. R for recognizing that running is a skill. It absolutely, squatting is a skill. Running is definitely a skill, so we can learn. And back when he created it, it was back in the day. It was in the 70s. There wasn't the technology there is today. There isn't the slow motion, the frames per second, all the tech. We don't, we didn't have that available back then. So the purpose of this is that we need to evolve. We need to, there is a problem. The injury risk is still 80 to 90% of people are getting injured every single year from running. And it doesn't have to be that way. I don't want it to be that way. Like me, movement is medicine. It's my mental health. As a physical therapist, I have the best job in the world. I just try to help people move better, move safer. And as a result, you'll move faster. I don't care as much about that, but I know that's important to you. So as I go through this, I want to also preface this with if you are practicing the pose yourself, you've been doing it and you're having success and you're happy, great. I'm not trying to make people unhappy or change people. If you want to improve, if you want to run faster, if you want to run safer, then I can teach you. That's it. I'm not forcing this on you. So I want to make sure we're clear with that. But saddle up because this is going to be a three-part series of me uh, completely debunking the pose method as far as the methodology because it's been going on too long and it is, it's opposite of what I'm teaching and I get questions all the time and we just need to, to clear the air and uh, to all get on the same page. So I'm going to break this up into three parts. My pose method, main objections, get it? Objectives, objections, three things. And we're going to go over one today. It uses muscles not designed for, to move forward. It reduces your speed and efficiency of running. It completely neglects Newton's third law of physics. Let's dive into that first one. Pose uses the wrong muscles. We're using the wrong muscles. This is crazy to me, but I hope after this you have a better understanding because if everyone had an understanding of the basics, I was taught that at physical therapy school, Dr. Phil, Know the basis, the experts know the basics the best, anatomy and biomechanics. So muscles 101, let's go over this. Every muscle, we have tons of muscles in our body. Our muscles are our movers. M for muscles, M movers. Every muscle has a starting point and an ending point. We call that an origin and an insertion. As the muscle inserts into the bone, it becomes the tendon. So we really have this lever pulley system. So what happens, think origin or home, when a muscle contracts, when you use a muscle, when you engage a muscle, when it contracts and shortens, we call that concentric activation, what direction does it go? It goes towards the origin. It, go, it moves back, its muscle shortens, contracts, and the, the movement is towards the origin. And as you can see, we get action. That's how we get action, we get movement. That distance, that change, that created movement. And the movement's not free. Our body has to work hard. It depends on the load, but muscle activation isn't free. It requires energy. And so we wanna make sure we're using the right muscles to move forward. I talk about when I say paying on the principle, this is it. When you, are caught, when you are expensing energy here, if it's not assisting in the goal of forward motion, it's unnecessary, it's wasted, it's paying on the interest, paying on the principle. So muscles create movements, but this is important. The reason it creates movements is because it crosses a joint. Muscles job, where they work, hey, where do you work? I work at Lowe's. I work at the joint. I work at joints. That's where muscles, all muscles work at a joint. What is a joint? It's just where two bones come together. Two bones come together, makes a joint. 
And so all muscles have the same job. They all shorten and contract, but depends on their location, where they work, what joint, it's going to cause a different movement, but it's all the same principle. So here's an example of a bicep. We can all relate to a bicep, right? Arm straight. The location where the movement actually occurs is at the elbow, is at the elbow joint where those two bones come together. So as I'm contracting and lifting that ice cream cone, snow cone, I actually wanted vanilla ice cream. I'm obsessed with vanilla ice cream, but the media thing I have didn't have it. So you're lifting the snow cone up, you're bending your elbow. What's happening? The bicep is shortening. The insertion near the elbow joint is drawing near the origin. And we call that flexion. That's called elbow flexion. The biceps are what's primarily responsible for this. And the location, the joint is at the elbow. And we have to ask, what is the the goal? What direction are we trying to create this movement? What direction? So imagine you've got Tommy here. It looks like Tommy has a, a beard, doesn't it? He's like four years old. He's got a beard. But he wants to play catch. You want to, you want to give Tommy a good time? <laughs> you want to throw the ball with Tommy, okay? He's over straight ahead. You're here. Would it make sense if you take that ball? I'm trying to get that ball forward to Tommy. Would it make sense if I activate my bicep at the elbow joint and create this upwards motion and the ball goes up. It doesn't go forward. We'll get to it, but this picking your feet up, pulling your feet up, running's about going forward. We're not trying to go up. The goal is forward. The goal's not up. Tommy's not going to get the ball. We got to give Tommy the ball. He, he needs a shave, but we need to give him the ball. So I want to talk about one of my favorite muscles, the tush, the gluteus maximus, king tush. And I want to explain how when muscles work, what I just described about the bicep, we call that open chain. Open chain meaning it, I'm not moving at the ground. It's in the air. I'm not using the ground to create movement. As I'm shortening, this is called open chain. Our legs primarily work in closed chain. They're on the ground. That's how we move. So in this example, the the tush's job is located at the hip joint. That's the location of the job. That's the axis. What happens when that tush engages, when the muscle shortens, creates this torque around the joint, and it creates this backwards, backwards motion, backwards motion. We call that hip extension, hip extension. Open chain, the foot's not on the ground. Here's an example. Here I'm balancing on the opposite leg and I'm extending my hip, open chain. Tush is working in the air, open chain. But here's where it gets confusing, but I want to make it simple. So, so simple. Closed chain is when the foot's on the ground. We can't move the earth back. Wouldn't that be crazy if you had that power? So, Closed chain is how the legs are working to create the best bang for your buck, to create the most amount of motion and movement. So again, now instead of the foot being off the ground in the air, now the foot's on the ground. And when we activate, when the thigh goes back, what happens? The ground's not going to move. You're moving. And so can you see how that same exact motion, same hip extension has occurred, but one that was in the air, one that's on the ground. And you see how point A to point B, if I'm trying to go forward, I'm pushing the ground back and my center mass, my body is translating forward. Looks the same. How does that look with running? The push with the tush, using the glutes to push the ground backwards to move forward. So you can see how same action, same joint, same muscle, It's just my foot was off the ground versus on the ground. That's it. So when we say push with the tush, this is it. So now that we know how muscles operate, especially when we're trying to create movement, I know this looks like a lot, but let's break this down. 
I think of the world in arrows. The biomechanics of everything, gravitational forces, muscles are producing force, movement, all arrows makes it so much more simple. Every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. That's Newton's third law. If I wanna move forward, I push the ground backwards. So let's look at this. The destination point, point A to point B. If I'm trying to move forward, I push back. The result is forward motion. We call that walking. This is where we get into trouble. This is what I'm trying to teach. The mechanics are the same, same direction, walking and running. But what happens, what should happen, as we increase, we turn up the tush. We turn up the tush, you push, you hit the ground harder to create more force, and you push back, you push back harder and further, harder and further. And what should happen as a result is you leave the ground, but you go horizontal. You cover more distance between each step. You don't go up. You'll see with the pose, they're taking tiny little baby steps, just such little steps, you're better off walking. and. It's such a high step rate. You said each activation of a muscle is expensive. It's expensive tissue. We don't need to do more work than we need to. But here's where most of it goes wrong. And and pose doesn't even say this. This is what's crazy about it. This is where most people are bounding. And when you're doing pose, if you're doing the pose correctly, you're doing it incorrectly. You're bounding. If I want to go up, if I want to go straight up in the air, I have to push the ground down. If my knees are locked out, I can't use my knees to help. My quads can't help then it's just my ankles, my calves are using it. When we're running, if you're trying to jump, then great, jump, push down. But with running going forward, it's interest. There's no point in going up. So without training, and that's what I'm dedicating my my rest of my career to, is don't push down and back. Just push back. Just push back to move forward. And that way we don't get this, this bounding. So yes, that's supposed to say frenergy. Yes, they, they, it's all about the gravity. They talk about gravity is like it's the only thing that's propelling you forward. So let's go back, to, let's go to this example. You've heard me, if you follow me for any period of time, you've heard me talk about the hankle at nauseum. I, I missed that word. I used to say that in PT school all the time. I talk all the time about hinging at the ankle, the hankle, the only movement when I'm standing to leaning, the only place that the movement, the location of the work, the joint, is at the ankle, not at the hip. So yes, they got that right, yes, thank you. What is gonna happen is there's this gravitational force at all times, all times it's going straight down, it's pulling you down towards the earth. And by leaning, you're creating, your center of mass gets shifted forward over that ankle joint, and it creates this forward movement, this forward momentum. I call it frenergy, free energy. So yes, that does. And they say, lean further to go faster. Yes, to a point, but it's not like hitting the gas. It's just gravity is still the same. We're just changing that angle. Think back to trigonometry. Yes, more of an angle is going to create some more movement, but it's not a lot. We've got to talk about the muscles. So here it is. Can we get double propulsion? Yes. So the leaning... If you've ever listened to uh, my podcast, episode two, I talk about gravity. I talk about this very thing. I talk about frenergy. I talk about gravity so much. I sound like I'm so in love with it. My, dro- my girlfriend got jealous. I was just, oh, gravity. Yes, it's a, it's a beautiful thing when used correctly. You want to make it your friend, not your foe. So by keeping the lean, yes, keep the lean. We're getting that forward movement. But here... I want to also do what we talked about earlier, push the ground backwards to create this forward movement. And what's crazy is what they actually say is they're incorrectly saying pull up. They're saying like pull your feet up, your stance. Like, And and I'll be honest, I took the pose method back in 2014. I graduated PT school in 2013. I've been fascinated with movement and running mechanics since then. And 2014, I went through and I tried all this on the, with patients, with myself. Everyone would ask the questions. I wouldn't know what the answer to it. I would just say, well, that's what I was told. Let's think. Let's think about this. Don't just accept it. Let's think about it. So they're saying, pick your feet up, pick your feet up, pick your feet up. Why? Why? Transferring from leg to leg? Yes, gravity is going to help, but 
You've got muscles for a reason. And they'll be using terms that don't make sense. They say, put, they say don't push. Don't push. You want to not give Tommy the ball? Tommy's a great kid. <sighs> so I'm going to let this play. And this will conclude part one of three of Pose Debunked. And again, this was all about the muscles. We're using the wrong muscles. How do muscles work? But I want you to watch this post that I did where I'm going to be doing the pose or pulling up by extremely inefficient versus just pushing back, pushing back. So thanks for being here and uh, let me know your thoughts down below.